Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am the class of 1959, uh, and I am quite pleased to welcome all of you here tonight. Uh, it's a wonderful time to convene with friends, to enjoy some good food, to tell tall tales, and to uh, hear from a very distinguished speaker after dinner. We owe a debt of gratitude to Ned Clements, the class of 1951, for developing the idea of a legacy dinner for the alumni who have celebrated their 50th class reunion and still want to come back year after year after year. When, when the idea was first launched, some thought it was a gathering for just a bunch of old people. <laughs> but not so, said Ned. A person is not old until one's regrets replace one's hopes, dreams, and plans for the future. And your presence here tonight and on previous occasions makes it manifest that none of us is old because each of us has our own hopes, dreams, and plans for a Fishman future that is worthy of its past. So welcome to all of you young people. Speaking of age, <laughs> you know the entrepreneur Bernard Baruch once said back in the 1920s that when he thought of old age, he thought of someone who was at least 15 years older than he was, and he was in his 80s. <laughs> but speaking of age, there is an old American saying that growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. <laughs> As we all remember, however, Fishman helped us grow up to live a life committed to honor, duty, and country. Fishman taught us the importance of self-discipline, the value of time management, the essence of civility and courtesy, along with the fundamentals of science and math, the importance of history, geography, and the languages, the benefits of athletics, and the extracurricular activities that make up a part of Fishman life, as well as the value of military training and leadership. We appreciate these things now more than perhaps we did then. After all, who enjoyed getting up at Reveille at so early in the morning? or putting our rooms in order, marching to our meals, and sometimes marching tours for minor infractions. <laughs> Who ever saw a future in shining one's shoes so shiny that one could see one's face? Who could forget the annual GI inspections from the federal government, as well as cab rides out to Fairfax Hall? <laughs> whatever your memories, whatever they are, we are here because of Fishman. Just as our world decades ago was quite different from those of a hundred years earlier, the world has changed dramatically since we were at Fishman. And if you think about it, we live in a globalized world today, where time and distance have been so telescoped, where advancing technologies and rapid communications are changing the world in which we live, and many of the rules that go with that. Many of those changes are breathtaking. For some of us, they are puzzling. Our cars are computers on wheels. Cell phones have more computing power than the computers had when the astronauts first journeyed into space. Here on, here on the ground, 85% of all the jobs lost in the last 10 to 12 years have been due to automation. We are living in a world of big data and now artificial intelligence. And these items will bring more change in the future than we could ever contemplate. But through it all, Fishburne still lives. 
It has not always been easy. The challenges of cadet and faculty recruitment are real. Financial stresses still endure. And since about two thirds of the school's revenue comes from tuition, you can understand the importance of cadet recruitment as well as faculty retention. Buildings and grounds must be maintained. Safety and security must be assured. Athletic programs are not cheap. Faculty recruitment and retention, as I've mentioned, are expensive. Debt service is an obligation that is a constant reminder about our concerns for the future. But helpfully, last night, the school announced a gift of $4.5 million to Fishman, which is a very nice gift, except for those that we expect to hear from tonight uh, exceeding that amount. <laughs> But we, we can't, but we can help fishermen financially from our homes. We can make annual giving a part of our charitable program. We can join the Colonel Young Brigade and provide some additional significant gifts. We can provide for a major bequest in our wills, in our plans and estates, and insurance policies. Your giving to fishermen is more than a gift. It is an investment in the fishermen we remember and the school we want to survive. Cash flow is sometimes not even, and our gifts can go a long way to ensuring a smoother flow of revenue in order for the school to meet its many obligations. So in a world of change that none of us could contemplate 50 years ago, the challenge for fishermen is to stay true to its mission of preparing cadets for their future, to continue the emphasis on fundamentals, to think creatively, imaginatively, analytically. Those are the keys to surviving in a world of change in which education is more important than ever before. And so I urge us all to remember that education is more important than ever. It must be our surest conviction. And here's why. We are, we are defined by what we teach. We are shaped by what we learn. And as long as Fishman lives, I'm confident about the life of this country as well as our school. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight and for your participation and support and the financial viability of the school we love on the Little Hill. Thank you and welcome again to the Legacy Dinner. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Governor. That is something nice.